All right, welcome everybody to the last class of CSI. No, not CSI, sorry, IS-58. So um, I highly encourage all of you guys to take IS-50B. It builds on this class. Um, there's some things that we do in B that I've been sort of like deliberately sort of not teaching in this class because they get kind of complicated. One of which might come up today or I might table this for, for next semester, which is um, how do you build a, um, animation blueprint, which we've kind of done a little bit, but like how do you um, do like an, uh, an AI blackboard and linking together like an AI um, decision-making blueprint AI kind of thing with the animations and, and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a thing. I think I'm probably not going to do very much of that today. Um, that's more of a 50 B topic usually. And how's my frame rate? I've disabled the efficiency cores on my CPU. I'm hoping that um, with the efficiency cores disabled, it'll force this video footage to be running on a performance core. And it's, it's okay. It's not great. Okay, so uh, trying to get that in an elevator to face around the wand shop and decide to let my brain rest. Yeah, so you could do it um, using like our zombie um, stuff without having to have like a full on like blackboard. And um, there's usually a state machine that we use to transition between different, like you're jumping and kind of falling through the air like this. And when you hit the ground, it transitions back into walking. You can go prone and stuff like that. It's kind of a little bit of a pain to set up. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's just kind of annoying. Um, but if you want to have um, Ollivander pace back and forth, <laughs> All right, that's funny. Congratulations, you've won the game. We're just collecting Domer inning info, and then we'll restart for you. It's <laughs> eh, funny. So <laughs> you win the game in a blue screens. I love it. I love it. Extra credit, one hundred percent. Okay. Um, you use the same machine for your animations this year. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that's more of a fifty B topic. Okay. So what you could do though is do something like the zombie brain DP. And so uh, what this does is if it can see the player, then it moves to the player. Otherwise, it will move to a random location within four meters. So what you can do is um, uh, you can instead have, rather than being a random location and navigable radius, what you can do is you can have like a patrol point and a, and a patrol point as variables on the zombie. And uh, if those are set, then you can have the zombie patrol back and forth between it, which um, I think that actually might be a 50A topic. So I've, ta I've taught that before in 50A, whereas the blueprint and anim DP and state machine and blackboard stuff is more of a 50B topic. So let's let's do that. I, I think that would be a good, a good ending topic here. Okay, so right now our zombies, uh, if they don't see the player, they just sort of randomly wander around in a... Uh, was it a four meter radius or something like that? So, um, didn't realize the text messed up. It's it's kind of funny. I mean, honestly. But, um, okay, and so and then we need to put in the the game over screen, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so uh, okay, so we're here on the zombie brain, and um, so we need to pull up the zombie itself. Min damage, max damage, health. Um, and so what we're going to do is kind of similar to where is our jump pad, right? So the jump pad has a jump target, which is just an actor reference. And, um, and that thing is let's fly over there. And so we uh, sort of eye droppered that we put like a little target point here into the world and then set that as the variable. And so we can do that for the zombies too. And if we're super cool about it, we can make it so that if the variable is not set, it patrols randomly. But if it is set, then it will go back and forth between a waypoint. So uh, maybe we can even have three waypoints or something like that, or like make a, so we can like make a zombie like, um, like I don't know, like go back and forth on the bridge here or something like that. That sounds kind of fun. So let's drag one of these guys out here. Okay, hello, no, no. Let's drag one of these guys out here, there we go, oh. There we go, all right. I like create one underneath the undo, undo, undo. Nope. Okay. Redo. Okay. 
I was, I was just worried that I'd made a zombie underneath the water here, and then I was going to come back to bite me quite literally. Okay, so we got a zombie here, all right? And so right now, if we run it, um, and I'm going to actually move the start point over. Where's my start point? Uh, player start right here. Uh, I'm actually going to move this. over here just so I don't because uh, if you remember the last lecture I kept um, I think the I think the collision on this isn't great so I'm actually just gonna put it like here no that's still falling through the <laughs> still falling through the bridge all right I'll just start here maybe okay there. And then we will rotate this to face El Zombo over there. And now when we hit play, we start here, right? So now you'll see that the zombie is actually unable to, um, and I need to fix that matter. Um, you know, it's right, you see how it's not moving. So do you guys know why this thing you guys know why the zombie's not actually moving? <laughs> Open original. There you go. So that's a that's a nice game over screen from last time. Um, let me just while while you guys are answering that question, why is the zombie? It's like running in place. Why is it not actually navigating around? Anyone know? While while you guys are answering that, I'm going to import the uh, game over screens that are made with a license that. It's not complete piracy. And then we're going to import these guys, and this will appear in the bill folder. Um, and I'm going to drop the. I'm going to drop these into the UE folder. Save all. There we go. Okay, so I'll get to that, that later. Why do they not move? Uh, no nav mesh. That is exactly right. So uh, we need to drop a nav. Hang on. Maybe it's not on screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, there is no nav mesh there. So if we make the nav mesh bigger, then you can see that um, I have I hit P. P is uh, the Shortcut to show the nav mesh. I don't know why it's P. Why not N? I probably used it already. I don't know. But uh, you can uh, you can see the area that it will uh, be able to navigate over. And uh, maybe I want this guy. Uh, let's just go big. Let's just go like 100, 100, 100. You get a nav mesh, and you get a nav mesh, and you get a nav mesh. Everybody gets a nav mesh. Okay. Um, so that pretty much covers the area that I want. I'm going to take it down to about 60 in the Y direction because my map is more kind of, you know, like narrow and long rather than kind of wide. I don't want my Zombos running out to here is about, about good. It's about where my mountain ridge is anyway on both sides. So the zombie will be able to like walk around the castle if it needs to. And yeah, it looks good. And the underwater area is also navigable. Okay, so there we go. So uh, you accidentally called me. I missed a call. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, it disconnected me from chat. Sorry about that. I, I was just answering the phone call. All right. So uh, now I need to restream, don't I? Screen three. There we go. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So we got an av mesh now. So if we start the game, uh, the zombie will now run around. You see that it's moving now, and if it sees me, it's gonna start chasing me around. Come on. Are you here? There we go. Yeah, it's chasing after me. Good. All right. And then if I sprint and get over the edge of the nav mesh, it'll 
it'll stop, right? Because that's that's as far as it can go, right? So it can't nav to me anymore. Oops. Bruh. Oh, there we go. All right. So uh, we want to set up a patrol on this. Sorry. Sorry. I love I love the sound effects on it. Okay. So we want to set up nav points on this thing. All right. So uh, where were we? We were on zombie BP and the zombie BP. We're going to add uh, how many? Do you, you guys would just want to do a simple point A to point B patrol? Do you want three points? Like, what do you feel like? What do you guys feel like? Yeah, simple two point patrol, and then you can like three. Okay. All right. If we're gonna do, if we're gonna do two, I just make two variables. But if we're gonna do like, if we're gonna do like multiple waypoints, then we're gonna do it properly. Like, we're gonna do it all properly. All right. So. We're gonna make, uh, we're here on the zombie VP. Okay, so we're gonna make a new variable. And this variable is gonna be an actor reference. Actor reference. Actor, actor object reference. There we go. And it's gonna be public. And uh, this thing is gonna be called our waypoints. And uh, it's not just gonna be one actor. And, and like I said, like if we we're gonna be doing two, I'd probably just make two of these things. And have point A, point B, and just have a path back and forth between them with like a boolean. It's like, am I going to point A or point B? But if we're going to be doing all proper like, we're going to make this an array of waypoints. So we're going to make this not just one variable. We're going to make it an entire array of variables. Okay. And so we can have uh, one waypoint. We can have five. We can have 10. We can have 100. We're going to do this properly. Okay. The only other thing that we need to have here is a uh, variable holding which waypoint we're currently walking towards, right? So when we reach one waypoint, we'll increment that and then go to the next waypoint. And when we reach that one, we increment it and so on and so forth. And when we hit the last one, we have to detect, oh, we're at the last waypoint. And then uh, we can either go backwards or we just go to the first one again, however you guys want to do it. Um, whether or not you want it to be like a loop or if you want it to be like, um, like a back and forth kind of thing. It's kind of up to you. What you guys want. All right. So, uh, so we've got our actor reference. We got it's public. Okay. We'll compile it. We'll save it. And um, you can add um, array elements here, which are going to give you slots basically for your waypoints. Uh, we got our zombie over here. And we can see that this guy is going to have uh, waypoints right here. And we can add waypoints like this. So if we want to do three waypoints, like Megan suggested, we can go click, 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 and get three spots available for our waypoints. And I'm just going to do like a target point or something like that. Power J. And I will drag you out to here. And um, I don't want to make it too high. <laughs> that will never reach the point, you know. Like it'll it'll be sitting there like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we need to make sure that it's actually something it can kind of touch. There, not too high up off up off the ground. Okay. So uh, this one, I'll even give it a name. I'll give it a cool name too. This will be called uh, Zombo Patrol Point One. Okay, and so when the thing spawns in, it'll, oh, sorry, uh, got to unplug the uh, rice cooker. Be right back. Thing. Okay, all right, disaster has been averted at the Kearney household. There will be no fire. All right, so we've got Zombo Waypoint 1, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift and just put over all right, here. Let's just, again, make sure that... Slow down the camera speed a little bit. Just make sure that it's not a point that's too high up off the ground. Should be fine. And then we'll do one more over here. Uh, make a little, we'll make a little circular patrol path. Okay. And so this one's going to be called Zombo Patrol Point 3. And this one over here should be 2. Good. It named it automatically for us. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, so Victor, 
Uh, remember, whenever you have a uh, bunch of variables like this, you need to set them. Or when you try accessing them, it's going to give you an access to a none, right? But uh, for the way that we're going to implement this right now, uh, we actually are going to make it so that if you don't set the way, waypoints, it'll just do the current behavior, which is to just mill about randomly, right? So miso soup, it's uh, it's good stuff, dude. Like uh, you take a, what's it called? I don't remember the Japanese name for it, but you take soybeans and uh, you ferment them for a long period of time. You put a little, uh, what's it called, fungus. Um, Kagi, kaji, kaji, on it, and then you ferment it. A lot of them just leave it under their sinks for like three months or a year or something like that, and then you get this like really thick paste, and um, uh, and then you can mix that into soup and uh, or use it in other purposes as well. Miso seaweed and tofu is absolutely amazing stuff. Okay, all right. Uh, so uh, let's actually get this code working first with uh, the code that's working right now. So, uh, zombie explode contact, zombie takes damage, um, get AI controller is not used for anything. Um, all right, so zombie brain BP, here we go. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do is, yeah, so if we see the player, we'll just chase them. So it's this code that's gonna change. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. And if the cast failed, uh, I wonder if there's a way of like pulling all three of these pins out. Select them. Probably is. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to do a validated get. Do you guys remember that? So I've got uh, I've got me. I've got my uh, uh, get controlled pawn. I'll just duplicate this and just pull this over here. So I don't have a, another one of these wires crossing half the continent. So uh, I'm gonna get the controlled pawn and I'm going to do a validated get. Validated get, no, that's not something you patch. Let's see here, validated, no. We'll do this, validated. And we'll do a get, and we will get its whatever it's called uh, waypoints. Yep. Um, getting more spam. No, how do I not the answer? Swipe down to decline. Okay. Right. Okay. Um. So I'm going to get its waypoints. Uh, okay. Oh, right, 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 because it's not a zombie, right? So, get controlled pawn, and then we are going to cast to. Uh, we've done this already, haven't we? Yeah. Um, cast a zombie BP. A zombie. P I'm just going to drag it out over here. I don't care anymore. Okay. Now I'm going to get waypoints here, and I should really do some reroute nodes, but whatever. I'm going to re. Uh, There's no convert to validated get here. Um, fine. Is valid? No. Right. Okay. Um, guess actually. Um, guess if it's empty. Yeah. Because there's two possibilities here, and, and this is this is what uh, I'm thinking of. So th it's always going to have the array, right? So that's why it's not letting me do a validated get because it can have an array. It's always going to have an array, but it could be empty, right? And so one thing we can do is we get the size of it, right? So if the size of this is uh, zero, then um, Q, uh, then we'll just move to a random location, right? Let's move through here, and so we'll do a branch and. Um, 
basically if the length of it is less than or equal to no, equal to zero. So Things are like crossing half the planet here. And two here. This is not great. Okay. So basically, um, if okay, so what we're doing here, it before like we're just randomly moving around, but there's another option for randomly moving around, and that's um, we have to decide: are we going to do the waypoint system? Or are we going to do random movement? And if there's no waypoints set, then we're going to do random movement. If there are waypoints set, then we'll do the waypoints. But there's two possibilities. One is that there's just nothing in the waypoint array, right? Like if you never created anything, like all of our existing zombies are going to have a waypoint length of zero because we come over here and like look at the uh, look at here. Click on that. You can see that it has zero array elements. So that means it has no waypoints set. That's something we need to uh, check for, right? So if there are no waypoints set, then false. It's just gonna come over here and we will randomly run around. There's a second possibility, which is that we come over here and we made a waypoint element and we forgot to set it. And so um, in that case, we also should randomly walk around, right? So, um, so yeah, so if we have, then we'll do a validated get on that. And if it fails to validate it again, that means we forgot to set one of the variables and then just randomly mill about aimlessly. Okay. So, but let's not worry about that right now. What we're gonna do is we've got on the zombie, we've got the actor array, and uh, we should also probably have a variable that is like current waypoint. And current waypoint is gonna be an integer and it's not gonna be a, Array. It's just going to be a regular integer, and we're going to compile it and save it and see that it defaults to zero. So basically, when we start off, we're going to be heading towards waypoint zero, right? And when we hit it, then current waypoint is going to increment to one, and then we're going to head to waypoint one, and we're going to keep doing that uh, until um, we hit the end, in which case we reset the waypoint back to zero again. So, uh, can you play it? It's not copyrighted at all. Victor's weekend dance party. Videos unavailable. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so that is good. Does it need to be public? Um, yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, okay. So we've got this. So if we have a true here, then we're going to do the waypoint system. Okay. So I'm going to make a new comment over here, and this will be waypoint. And so this part here is going to be, do we use waypoint system or randomly move? And yeah. And so if the waypoint system is currently empty, then we randomly move. Otherwise, we're going to do waypoints. Okay. Line everything up. Okay. Uh, you need music in the game. Yeah. And so I've got, um, uh, I have lots of assets that I've bought uh, over the years. Humble Mega Assets Pack, like um, icons, let's see, modular dungeons, stylized forests, let's see, soundtracks. Uh, these are all just you know, and hours of music and things like that. Black sales, I love Black sales. All right, let's extract it here. I love sea shanties and pirate music, so let's see what that sounds like. Black sales audio, dark fantasy, black sales. The ocean takes it all. Let's play it in media player, why not?
Good enough for me. Okay, let's toss this into my game. I want I want some music in my game too. All right, so this will be in Bill Sounds, and I'm just gonna drag in the ocean takes it all. There we go, and uh, there we go. And save this, and we're gonna create a queue out of it, and uh, ocean queue, uh, ocean soundtrack. And we want it to loop, looping troop. There we go. All right. So, um, I need to open up the third person character again. And on begin play. I'm just going to insert it right here at the beginning. High quality coding here. Play sound 2D. Uh, it's hard to find. And we're going to do ocean soundtrack queue. There we go. Save. Okay, so when we uh, play the game now, we got a soundtrack going on. Check that out. I don't know if it's coming through on the on the recording, but. There you go. That's how you do soundtracks. A um, little bit uh, comes through when I'm talking. Okay. Yeah, oh, whatever. It's very epic and dramatic. There you go. Okay, so where are we? Um, that's how easy it is though. You just import, import something. Ideally, ideally you wanna have a soundtrack that loops. Uh, if that's as basic as you're going to like, as I did it, um, you want to find some free assets that loop and then you can just seamlessly play it over and over again. Um, that's probably going to annoy the hell out of your players if they play your game for any length of time. So you need to do better than that. But that's, that's the simplest way of putting in like some background music. Okay, so we got our waypoint system. Let's do this. So we're going to pull out from here. And we are going to um, actually we can pull out from here and do a git reference. Nope, that's not right. Uh, that's the length. Sorry, here. Git ref. Git the copy. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna get the next waypoint. Okay, and so the waypoint that we're gonna get is, oh my lord, that's from, oh my gosh. So terrible, so terrible, it's absolutely terrible. Okay, um, well, great. <laughs> Once you're into spaghetti, spaghetti all the way down. All right, just dragging this line all the way across the board. Okay, we're gonna get um, next, what's it, next waypoint? Uh, get uh, current waypoint. Actually, it should be next waypoint, right? Yeah, that would make more sense. So that's the that's the waypoint we're gonna be heading to. That's the next waypoint, right? Yeah, I like that better. Okay. And it automatically changes the name here. Nice. Okay. So we are going to get the next waypoint, and that is the waypoint that we're gonna be traveling to. And um This thing only triggers so often, right? There's a problem in Unreal Engine where if you keep telling, if you issue like a move to order, like every frame, like the thing will like start twitching and like freaking out because like you're giving it like move there, move there, move there, move there. Um, okay, we got a two second delay on there. Okay, we're fine. All right, so that should be fine. So, do, 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 do. all right, so target, move waypoint. Um, and we're going to get an actor and we will just tell it to move to that actor. Simple as that. So move to the goal and the controller is me. And 
just line these things up. And so that's it. So basically, um, at least for the first waypoint, we need, we need to have a little bit of uh, intelligence in there that says if we're within range, move to the next point. But this should be a good place to start. So basically, if we've got a waypoint, uh, if we have a if we have elements of the array of the waypoint array, then what it will do is it will get the index. Uh, so the next waypoint is going to be zero. It's the first element in the array. It's going to get that waypoint, and then it's going to say move to that waypoint. And so we've got these three different uh, target points out of the world, and it will move to this one, uh, assuming I have them set, which I don't think I do. So it's dropper tool that one, and dropper tool that one, and dropper tool that one. If you don't set them, it won't work, and we haven't done a validated get yet, right? So uh, let's save everything, hit play, and Uh, nah. Ah. Okay. All right, let me start this one over. See if we can stay out of, out of sight. It looks like it's moving randomly. Every two seconds, it's changing. Yeah, I don't think it's doing the random movement. Let's see here. So, uh, is waypoint length equal to zero? Oh, they're backwards. <laughs> That's right. Okay. If it's equal to zero, then we randomly move. If it's not equal to zero, then we simply move. There we go. A little Boolean not action in there would work too. Okay, so now it moved to waypoint one, and it's just going to sit there. All right. So cool. That's why you always test your code. All right. That's why you always test your code. It's easy, these two are backwards. Or I could have said not equals. But, but, okay. So uh, you heard some music? Bruh. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what we need to do is uh, now that we're successfully moving to the first waypoint, we need to make it so that if you're close to the waypoint that it then increments next waypoint. So, so that is that. So before we issue another move command, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we are within, um, I don't know, what do you think, like a meter or two of it, something like that. Uh, so you don't, because so, sometimes you can't exactly touch it, right? Because it's like slightly above your head or something. So if we come within like a meter or two of it, so this is the waypoint, and so this is us. And so what we need to do is just do a distance. Let's see, get location. Oh no, we're a brain, aren't we? All right, all right, all right. Um, I'm getting tired of all the spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. And that, okay, so we'll just... There. So we're doing it every frame. Uh, if you remember, we did that on begin play, but begin play wasn't working right when you spawn somebody in. So like if you spawn a zombie, the begin play wasn't running. And so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna set the variable every tick, which is really terrible. Um, but it's, I'm, I'm getting tired of spaghetti, so, okay. So all these lines coming away over here, this is just gonna be our body instead. So yay, no more spaghetti on that right there. And then over here, we are gonna get, uh, let's see, what is, that? is that also our body? Yes, it is. So that is also gonna be our body. Yep. I can clone that, I guess, whatever. Um, okay, so our body, we're gonna get the location. All right, so we're gonna get the location. Get nav, location, get after location. So we're gonna get our location and we're gonna get the location of the waypoint. And we're 
going to take the, diff the distance between them. And so this is doing the Pythagorean theorem. And so what we're doing is we're getting uh, our location and we're getting the location, let's line that up, and then we're getting the location of and there. Then we're getting the location of the waypoint and what we're gonna say is, um, should probably have a variable for this, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if this is within, let's say it's just within like two, two meters or something like that, then move to the next waypoint. So if we are within two meters, let's pull out into a branch. So you guys see what's happening here? So this is where the zombie is. This is where the waypoint is. And if the distance between the, uh, the zombie and the waypoint is below 200, then what we're going to do is update um, next waypoint. So next waypoint is going to be plus plus. And then it will wait two seconds. Yeah, that's actually kind of what I want. It, I, I could have immediately grabbed the next waypoint, but as it is, I kind of wanted to sit there and pause for two seconds. Ah, damn, it saw me. Let's go hide. And then it goes off to the second waypoint. And then it's gonna pause there for two seconds. And then it goes to the third waypoint. And then it's going to pause there for two seconds. And now the index is like off the edge of the map, <laughs> off the edge of the array, and we're going to get an error, right? Because the one thing we're not checking for is the uh, going back to the original one again, right? So uh, if uh, once we hit the third waypoint, we should check to see if it's the last waypoint and if it is set the next waypoint to be zero. So that's one more branch. And then I think we're done with this. So um, if you equal the length, oh my gosh, all these wires are killing me. Uh, let's get you out of the way here. So if that, if the new, if the new uh, thing is equal to the size of the array there. Okay. So basically uh, the first waypoint is waypoint zero. Then we'll go to waypoint one. Then we'll go to waypoint two. Now we've incremented it and we're going to be going to waypoint three. Waypoint three doesn't exist, but waypoint, but three is the size of the array. And so if, the size of the array equals the uh, the waypoint we're going to, then branch, then um, it's also still just did something new to you. Uh, then we will set um, Um, our body dot set next waypoint to be zero. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, if we're still on the way, it's just going to keep moving to the actor. If um, if we've hit the current waypoint, then our waypoint is going to be incremented by one. And then we check to see if we have hit the maximum size. Uh, if we have hit the size of the array as our next waypoint, 
then we set what next waypoint back to zero and then we do a, uh, and then we're going to keep moving to the current waypoint for another two seconds if i wanted to i could grab the next waypoint immediately but i kind of like the behavior where it will sort of pause okay. and it's going to go to waypoint one it's going to go to waypoint two and i'm going to hide out of the way so you can see me pauses for a couple seconds then it goes to waypoint zero and then it's going to go to waypoint one and we've got a three-point patrol route. What do you guys think? There it is. I think that's I think it's a pretty good way to finish the semester. And it's fully extensible. You can just sit there and add more elements to the patrol path if you want. And it will very happily run a route of wherever you put those patrol points. Um, and then if there are no waypoints set, then if we come over to here. You can see the zombies are still just doing the zombie thing where they're just randomly milling about. Okay. So if you have waypoints set, it'll follow the route. If there are no waypoints set, it'll mill Ram randomly, aimlessly around. And then if it ever spots us, then uh, it'll start chasing after us like that. So if we jump off the world and hide, then uh, it should resume the, uh, yeah, then there you go. You can see it's gone back to patrolling its route. Yeah. Nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. And as always, like these things go, like, you know, it's never not without bugs, right? Like there's always going to be bugs and things like that. And I don't, I don't try to hide that from you guys because I think that a lot of, professors and streamers kind of give this false impression that it just always works right. You know, it's just so easy, you know? Uh, and the reality is like, you're going to misclick something or like last time I, I like, I think I previewed something without actually clicking it to select it. I'm like, why is it not, not appearing? You know, you, these things happen, right? Like when you do development, like there's always going to be bugs. There's always going to be, you know, turn off the nav mesh. You know, there's always going to be things, and and I, I and it's my opinion that like you seeing how I go about like debugging it and like trying like why is it doing this, you know, uh, is actually probably pretty useful for you guys. So. Uh, <laughs> communist and our our code, yeah. Um, I can I can post this for you. I'm sort of embarrassed by it. Like I I, I really just want to take a broom to this and just clean up. Like the, there's just there's just wires everywhere on this, but um. Sure, here we go, waypoint system. And, uh, you know, you don't have to have like the fallback to randomly milling about, you don't have to have that. Um, oh, one thing I should do is next waypoint, get this. is valid and I don't have room to put it there. So like if, uh, if we had left any of these things empty, then the uh, zombie brain should, uh, we should add a branch and say, if it's not valid, then randomly mill about, or we could print an error to the screen. Like, Hey, you forgot to set something. Um, but uh, I've got enough spaghetti up here as it is, but that that's how you do it. It's like basically when you try getting an array element, um, you say, is it valid? And if it's not valid, that means the person forgot to drop or something. And then you can just have it fall back to, uh, you know, randomly moving around, or you can print an error to the screen or you can kill the program or something like that. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> Ugh. This is all being recorded for posterity, isn't it? Side. Okay, whatever. Um, screenshot. There. And this part as well. And this, uh, again, you don't really need to, like, if you're just always going to have them use waypoints, you can just have them use waypoints. but. I kind of like the notion, like, I, I kind of like how it looks, right? Because now I can just drop zombies in, or if I spawn zombies, the spawn zombies aren't going to have any waypoints set anyway, right? And so I'll have a default behavior while the 
they'll behave like zombies, but like if there's a couple that I want to have as guard zombies, then I could just, you know, add, I could just come over here and like, you know, and make a zombie on the back side over here. So I'll drag out a zombie over here. And um, give them some waypoints. Maybe just a simple two waypoint system. Target point here. And this will be. Zom way one. Zom way two. And then remember, don't forget to drop them. Or you can pick, you know, Zom way one. You can drop them either way. This is fine. Zom way two. And then if we run this, you can see just how quickly we can. Nah. Die. Ah. There we go. Brah. As you can see, it's just going to sit there and run back and forth on that route. Bruh. Okay. Yeah, you and, and this you don't have to do this with um, enemies, right? Like any any NPC you can have have waypoints in it, right? Like in Skyrim, they have uh, the system called Radiant AI, and you can have at different times of day, they will go and walk to the, um, you know, meat shop and have a dialogue, and then they walk over here, and then they walk over here, and then at five o'clock, they go home and cook food and, and things like that. And so it doesn't have to be enemies, you know, it's just, um, yeah, waypoint systems are just very customizable. You know, so you can have, you know, cars that are waypointing around on a city, you know, that, you know, they'll follow the path or whatever. Yep. Um, you don't have any enemies in the game. That's cool. I mean, you got, you got challenges and stuff, so it's all good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the end of the year. Uh, next week is finals week. Uh, there's no final in this class. There's a final project. And so you have to show off your final project uh, next week. That's the hard cap end of the semester. There's no more flexibility beyond the end of the semester. So uh, if you have any missing homework assignments, things like that, uh, get them done because the deadline's coming up next a week from today, the last day. And so on Tuesday and Thursday, we will meet here, I guess, online for you guys to do your presentations of the mods and the final project and things like that. Um, typically on the last day, everybody wants to go and show everything. And then the class runs to be like five hours long. And so uh, I would highly recommend you not do everything in this class in the last two days. So present something on Tuesday, like either your mod or your game, one or the other, and then do the other on Thursday, okay? And, uh, and then we won't have to be here for like four hours. And if you can't make class, because I do know there's a number of students that are just taking it purely asynchronously, um, I guess you can like record a video or something like that. But, um, I, you know, it's, I, I, I like being able to ask questions and things like that. Um, and it is, it will probably be who view from a grade, grade perspective to actually be here and present. But if you can't just message me on discord and, uh, you know, like make a YouTube video of it or something. Um, what exactly are the grading criteria? It's completely subjective. So <laughs> the good news is, uh, you know, most you know, it, d did you do what you said you're going to do? It's not. Okay. Uh, did you do what you said you're going to do in your proposal? That's why the proposals exist, right? And if you need to adjust the scope of your proposal, then uh, contact me and I will reapprove a new proposal that has been scoped up or down. Uh, do I need to see the blueprints? Nope. Um, if you got spaghetti, I got spaghetti. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fine. It's fine. You don't, you don't need to show how the sausage got made, so to speak. If that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, that'll be next Tuesday, next Thursday. All right. Uh, you want to make a shoot down targets game? Well, you got a week. So, um, <laughs> talk to me, talk to me on discord and, uh, and we can, we can work it out. Okay. Um, 
Right, game over the screen. That was the last thing here. So, uh, Bill, um, Yui, main HUD. Now, do we want to do it in the main HUD or do we want to do a widget? Um, hmm, best practice. Um, <laughs> hmm. I'm going to do bad practice here. Um, ideally, what you do is you create a new uh, widget for this. Um, but uh, I'm just going to. I'm just going to do it the lazy way. All right. So I'm going to drag an image out here. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to have this minimize my face. X and Y, zero, size, size, alignment. Okay. Drag this out to cover the whole screen. And this is why it's a bad practice because. Um, even though this is going to be hidden by default, um, <laughs> you can't see you can't see your U if you're doing it this way. It's a terrible idea. Okay. Um, so Z order allows you to put it behind things, um, things like that. So you can have like the uh, if you adjust the Z order, you can have it behind the other things, but that's actually not good. So when it's game over, you don't want to see your health bar and your stamina bar anymore. So this will just be. Uh, and then the image uh, will be um, game over. I actually don't remember. Game over screen, there it is. Okay. Yeah. There you go. There's the game over screen. And uh, by default, it will be where's visible. Visibility will be uh, actually, we're going to bind a function to visibility. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that there's a function that's going to be running every frame. And it's going to be like, hey, is the player dead? 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 And um, and then for victory, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll probably switch out the image or do a separate image for it. Um, and then basically say, is Boris dead? Is Boris dead? Is Boris dead? And uh, if it's dead, then we uh, show the victory screen. So we're going to bind the visibility to a function. We're going to create a binding here. And the visibility is going to return true or false, whether or not it's visible. And game over is going to be based purely on the player's health. So we're going to drag out main character. Remember how we set a variable for that? That's why I wanted to do it this way. Like I said, I'm kind of being lazy right now, but uh, we got all the stuff there. So it doesn't matter. Uh, dead image. Um, did I do this already? Maybe I did. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, uh, so we're going to drag it here and we are going to get the health, uh, get the health of the player. And if the health of the player is going to be drag out less than or equal to zero. Uh, the board game Fort. No, what is that about? Um, nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, tell me, tell me about Fort. And um, next Friday, by the way, is the end of the year party, uh, nine a.m. to four p.m. in uh, AC one one fourteen. We're having an end of the year party, and then uh, there's a board game uh, <laughs> event after our party. So if you haven't had enough land party, Smash Brothers, and things like that, uh, we will have board games afterwards as well. And then there's also going to be some board gaming events over break. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. So if the person's health is less than or equal to zero, then we will return, make it visible. Otherwise, duplicate. We will make it hidden. Okay. End of the year party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh... All blurry now. There we go. All right. Um, right. So if the person's health is less than or equal to zero, 
then we show the uh, game over screen. If their health is not less than or equal to zero, we hide the game over screen. So let's try this out. Play. Bruh. Start getting shot by these guys. So my health is dropping. And there we go. Game over. Alright. And it restarts. It restarts the map. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, all so that I mean, it worked. Yeah. Alright. Cool. Um, let's see. Designer up here. And uh, it didn't fill up the entire screen either. Um, sized, whatever, yeah, we'll get it later. So we got that and then we need to, uh, do a victory screen. So the victory screen, we could just probably just duplicate this one. Um, and for this one, we will, uh, do the victory. Yeah, cool. All right. Victory screen me. There we go. Z order of six, I guess, because if you die and win at the same time, you, you won, I guess. Maybe. No. Okay, so we'll do victory on that, compile, save, and its visibility will be bound to a different thing. And so the visibility of winning is gonna be based on how many Borises are in the world. And I don't remember its class name, Boris player character. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna get uh, is by class. Well, actors of class. This is a horrible garbage way of doing it. Whatever. Um, why not? Okay. And so we're going to get all Boris player characters. And we are going to count how many Boris player characters are in the world. And if that number is less than or equal to zero, Anyway, the number here is less than or equal to zero. Branch. Whatever. Uh, if the number is less than or equal to zero, then we win. Otherwise, uh, don't show anything. This is actually not clear coding, but whatever. Okay, so if uh, all the Borises are dead, then we show the victory screen. And if it's not, uh, we don't. Okay, so there we go, we got this. Now we could play through the whole game getting the vaccine and stuff, but I just want to test this. Going through the secret entrance. <laughs> it doesn't pause the game or anything. So you can see it doesn't cover up the whole screen, but good enough. There we go. All right. So that is fall 2022. 20, okay. So we've got a game where uh, I should probably make it so you have to fly through those rings too. Huh? You have to kill Boris and fly through the rings. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Yeah, that real fast. And do these things die when we walk through them? Do you remember? Do they delete themselves? Um, target ring BP. Overlap. They destroy themselves. Okay, cool. All right, neat. So let's just add one more of those things to it. And uh, so you have to you have to get the vaccine. Uh, you have to kill Boris, and then you also have to fly through the rings to win. Okay. So target ring BP. Okay, so we're gonna duplicate this. Boop. And we're gonna do the, basically the exact same thing. We are gonna get, uh, yeah, we'll just wire it up this way. Um, and we are gonna get not you, we're gonna get target ring BP like that. And we're gonna get the length of you. 
And uh, yeah, so we just add these together just to make the, so we only need one branch instead of two branches. And so if we add the two of these things together and they equal zero, then you win the game. No, not you. You. Okay, so it's gonna get everybody of type Boris. It's gonna get everybody of type um, target ring VP. It's gonna add them together. If there's no Boris's or target rings, then it shows you win. Otherwise, it will not. All right, so let's play the game. Here we go. Like 10 minutes left in the semester. All right. Um, so let's first of all, we got to go get the vaccine over here. Oops, clicked on my face. Ah, don't want to die. It'd be embarrassing. Trying to cure you, all right? So I got the target ring BPs. Uh, I should be able to get the vaccine. I think all the zombies are, oh, no, dang it. There's still one zombie around, trolling around back, but I think I have a program to allow you to pick it up anyway. Dang it, nope. Okay, sorry, sorry. we gotta go kill that other. Oh, we got two zombies left, right? Yeah, it's programmed right now that if there's one zombie left, um, it will allow you to pick up the vaccine, but I forgot I put this guard over here and he counts so Bruh. good job guarding spotted me but my golden balls are just too powerful for it got the vaccine and let's do this <laughs> I forgot to take out this <laughs> That platform from when there was a, uh, a boat there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I hope you guys learned a lot. Like, I, I have you guys kind of like copying what I do, but um, at the same time, like, I, I'm i kind of trying to make sure you guys understand, like, what's going on so that you can, like, adapt it and make your own variants of it and things like that. Because there's, 
there's so many different things you can do in, in games. It's hard to like, you know, say, well, like, you know, this is how you make stairs. This is how you make ladders. And even if you wanted to make a ladder, there's like a million different ways you can do ladders and doors and, and things like that. So I, I try to just like show you examples and screenshot it so you can have something to work from. But hopefully I'm hope, my hope at least is that you're able to like have like a basic toolkit of things that you could use to make a game. And uh, even if you're not going to work professionally in the games industry, there's a lot of concepts in video games that apply to real life. The, um, um, the reality of the situation is that, um, the, uh, the math in, in video games is used a lot in simulations, physics. Um, anytime you're trying to simulate the real world, it's probably going to have some overlap with video games because video games are trying to simulate the real world. Like, how does collision work? How does gravity work? How do, how do you tell if one thing is touching another thing, you know? And so I originally wanted in computer science to be a security major. Then I decided that uh, I didn't like um, doing all these, like, kind of obscure mathematics for a living. And so I wanted to become like a game or like a computer graphics um, person. And then I ended up getting into like simulations and doing like fluid simulations and physics and applied math and visualizations and scientific visualizations and things like that. And what I found was like my experience in the industry was actually really helpful in uh, doing all that kind of stuff. Because there's a lot of overlap between like simulating the real world and simulating the real world with zombies in it. You know, like there's... You know, it, it's kind of kind of the same thing, you know. So, uh, just uh, with one, you're shooting things; and the other one, you're like trying to measure, you know, the effects of salinity on salt water, or you know, something like that. So, um, it's also a fun thing just to do, like as a hobby. Like one of the things that I found, like after I graduated from college, was that I sort of missed um, having to push myself and like having to learn. And things like that. And in gaming, you're always learning. There's always some tutorial you can learn. Some, you know, somebody, you know, one of the streamers that does UE5 comes out with a grappling hook demo or something like that. And um, um, and you're always learning new new things. Like, it's a massive field. And so uh, even if you don't do it professionally, even if you don't work doing simulations, um, it's just good to keep, like, you know, getting practice doing tech stuff, like building stuff. It's, it's a great way of being creative. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people sort of stagnate once they get into like their thirties, like they sort of like stop being creative because like they, they get a job and they do the same thing at the job every day. And then when they get home, they're sort of exhausted and then they just like watch TV and go to sleep. And over time, I, I think it sort of stagnates you. I, I think it sort of like dulls your creative edge and uh, in a video game, I wonder if I minimize this, if my frame rate will come up. Yeah, it's better. Cool. Um, in in video games, like you have to be creative. Like there's just no, um, there's just no way around it. You know, like you're just constantly innovating and being creative and trying to put new things together. And and like I said, I like doing it with my daughter. Like she uh, she loves like building these like water temples and elevators and you know trees and things like that. And it's just, a, it's a fun experience to do it with her, but it's also fun for me too, because it, it allows me to keep like making games and making mods and, and things like that. Uh, you can never run out of ideas for video games. I know, right? Like I've always wanted to do a game called Barnyard Wars, where it's just like, everybody's like a different species of animal, you know, like some people are playing like ants and they're like running around trying to like steal food and like, just like, you know, run up the score by just like stealing food from the chickens and things like that. And and like there's spiders that are like trying to catch the bugs and like birds that are trying to eat the spiders and, um, you know, people that can shoot the birds, you know, but in general, like, you know, and then there's mosquitoes that are like preying on the humans. And so like, depending on your class, it's a radically different, um, a radically different gameplay experience, right? If you're an ant, like the world's like, you know, gargantuan, you, you just have this tiny little camera down here and you're just running around like trying to score points, you know, by stealing the humans, picnic food and stuff like that. And uh, I just really like, you know, complicated asymmetrical games like that where, uh, you know, and then you could like 
oh, uh, you know, too many people are going ants. All right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go spider and start, you know, just laying down traps for people and stuff like that. Like it's something, it's something that I've always, always kind of wanted to do. My daughter's trying to get old enough that, um, I'm going to like probably start working on it with her. Although she has her own ideas for games, right? So <laughs> like she's, she sketched out this whole, you know, game world with like five different zones in it. And one's like a giant hotel and you have to like run around inside of the hotel and another area is like a, um, canyon area and stuff like that. So might have some creative differences. So we'll see how that goes. Um, hmm. uh, when you are done with a game, by the way, when you're done with the game, there is a, uh, um, um, see here they moved it again um well, i'll have to i'll have to look at that but uh you have a way of like packaging your i'm just not seeing it it used to be under the file menu uh, there used to be a option to package your project. And so you actually turn it into an executable and, uh, um, and then you can like put it on a USB drive and take it to your friend's house and they can double click it and it runs. Uh, right now we're, we're doing something called play in uh, browser. Um, um, you know, we're playing it in the editor PIE. And, uh, when you actually play it for real, you know, you're not running on real engine on other people's stuff. Um, One second, I'll see if I can find it. That's also something you want to do. You want to you want to do build, uh, and it'll speed up your your thing if it can pre-compute some things. Instrumentation profile have platform device manager device. Okay, all right. Uh, release the device sharing device power attribute and tool needs. Yeah, somewhere. I'll get it for you guys and post on Discord. But yeah, basically, it's it's pretty cool. Like it, it takes a while too, because what it what it does is it, uh, um, and that's always the fun of uh, working with Unreal Engine is that they constantly update and move things around. Like five point one has a completely different input system now, right? It's like gotta learn that. Uh, but yeah, you package it up, you put it on disc, and then you can uh, you know take it to your friend's house and have a game to play and stuff like that. So it's um, it's a uh, it's a really cool experience, you know, and you can just, you know, when you, when you kind of get some practice at it and kind of understand like the linear algebra and like how to have blueprints, talk to blueprints and trace line and projectiles and touch and overlap and all that kind of stuff. Christmas gifts for everyone. Yeah. You can just make a game for them, you know, and just put that, put together a little game and then it'll just blow, absolutely blow their mind. What? What? Is, what? You know, and it doesn't have to be like, you know, a giant world of Warcraft kind of game or something like that. It's like a little game with their face in it, you know, and, you know, stuff like that. It's really neat. It's, it's really fun. So uh, I guess I'll end with that. So the, um, it's been great having you guys. You, you uh, I've said it before, but you guys have been uh, probably the best class I've ever taught in IS58. It makes me really happy to see you guys really going out there and working hard and doing some really amazing stuff. So thank you for being wonderful students uh, this semester. I hope to see you again in 50B, either next semester or over the summer or whenever you can take it. Uh, I'm going to be teaching uh, 50A and 50B every semester. It's in person in spring and summer, and it's online in the fall. So if you can take it next fall, because uh, you can only take it online, that's cool. If not, in person would be awesome too. So thanks, you guys, and uh, I'll see you next week for your presentations. Peace out.